What have you been doing to keep busy during the quarantine? I've been writing a lot of music and, and trying to keep that. That's always, uh, you know, it takes a while to get into it, but once you get the flow happening. We've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. Painting, I'm spackling, I got a drywall, the ceiling in the middle bedroom. I am calling my friends, calling my family, Zooming all the time. Trying to stay in shape and uh, practicing when I can. Making a lot of food at the house. Half the house is really good at baking. I'm the one who's good with meats. So I tend to be the, the pork and steak guy. Crawling into bed around 4 p.m. and trying to crawl back out when, when possible. Decided to take up hydroponic gardening. Sit on my phone all day. That's it. I make a lot of friendship bracelets, and then to single-handedly keep the post office afloat, I mail them out. <laughs> it's me. If you've been wondering, it's me doing it. Practicing. Um, kind of getting sick of that, though. I've been um, taking walks with my wife and my cat, which I'm not I'm somewhat ashamed of. And I've been starting things and not finishing them. What job have you had, if any, that is the most unrelated to music? Worked in an AMC movie theater uh, when I was 15. I think I was mostly just the uh, the ticket ripper, which apparently was a job. Unrelated music? The, sorry. I was a historical interpreter at the Colonial Pennsylvania Plantation, where I wore a bonnet and I gave tours of the farmhouse. I was a truck driver. I used to bale hay and walk beans. I, I had three layers of skirts, two layers of shirts. Dog sitter. I always like to brag about the fact that I worked at a honey butter factory. And then you wore an under bonnet and then a bonnet over that bonnet. I was actually a nude model for um, a few sculpting classes. Uh, I worked as a, a maintenance person in a specialty battery factory. It was, I was laying down and like had my hand, my head or something like that and she made a sculpture out of it, and it currently sits uh, on the piano at my parents' house. I would say that the, that job was probably being an umpire. And it's really funny, because it actually, it looks a lot like me, like the hair, the, like, you know, just there, it's funny. Uh, what job have you had that's the most unrelated to music? None. What is the best alcoholic beverage to drink while playing jazz? While playing jazz, where to begin? You gotta have two. I feel like you have to have like a nice light beer, like a high life, and like a whiskey as well for like when you f up. What I used to have was uh, a shot of vodka and a beer. I always liked that. Manhattan is one of my favorite favorites. Well, it depends. Am I already drunk? Best alcoholic beverage would be a Daytona Corona, which is a high life with a lime. Definitely, uh, definitely vodka soda or a high life. Probably uh, Mingus eggnog. Scotch with a sidecar, uh, or, or, well, take two. A, a small whiskey and then to nurse a beer, but be careful not to drink it all before you play. So I'm into like maybe a splash cranberry with some vodka or, you know, maybe a gin with uh, club soda and a lime, uh, not too sweet. So you don't get a stomach ache if you, if you have a few of them. Not super creative with it. I just kind of like beer. So I just drink beer. Preferably bourbon. And, and Greg, do you drink less when the drinks aren't free? Probably not. <laughs> I don't drink and quit. So... I don't know. I might ask, oh. ask, ask somebody else. <laughs> Who would win in a bar fight, John Coltrane or Dizzy Gillespie? Dizzy Gillespie. Do I have to provide a reasoning? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Train seemed like a very, very serious guy. I feel like I wouldn't want to get into a fight with him. Uh... <laughs> Dizzy would win the bar fight. He seemed a little more um, aggressive. Well, probably Train, because I feel like Train was kind of, Train was kind of, kind of big. I picture Train as a, as a svelte guy. I'm gonna go with Dizzy, because uh, if you know about the famous spitball story, which I won't tell because it's kind of long. Somebody shot a spitball at Cab Calloway, and he turns around and thinks it's Dizzy because Dizzy was a practical joker. 
and then he fires Dizzy Gillespie. There's like a whole altercation. I don't know if they actually fought or not, but anyway. Coltrane was tall. Dizzy was kind of short. Try Coltrane. I think Dizzy. I think he has like like big guy power. John Coltrane. Coltrane was in the Navy, but Dizzy probably has more street smarts, maybe. I would not want to fight him. <laughs> I think Dizzy Gillespie. That, <laughs> I just can't imagine Coltrane fighting anyone. John would be like too well-mannered, I feel like. I don't know. Ty? People refer to jazz musicians as cats, but is there a different animal that you better identify with? Skinks. Good one. Kangaroo. They're cool little lizards, and they're kind of niche. Puppies. No, uh, wolves. I don't know what, what a bull, some kind of bear. I'm a large guy. I have a temper. I don't know, something big. I took my, my Harry Potter, like, uh, spirit animal test, and I was an orca. And I've always been very proud of that. Maybe that little echidna guy from Harry Potter who steals all the gold stuff and puts it in his pouch. Oh, not Harry Potter, sorry. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I would say an otter. I, I want to be an otter, but I think I know I'm a badger. A turtle. Maybe bear, kind of like being outside, I like being in the woods, I like giving hugs. No, I think cats are a pretty good description of jazz musicians. You can see the resemblance. Which I love. People refer to jazz musicians as cats, but is there a different animal that you better identify with? Well, I think I look like a mouse, so. No, probably not. <laughs> uh, about a white elephant. Why is that? Why do you identify with a white elephant? This is pretty rare. And, you know, it, it's like a kind of a thing of the past. What would you want to say right now to the Philly jazz community at large? I miss you all a lot. And like everyone, even the people who I only see like once a year. I'm like, yeah, come on, what's up? Let's hang out. Call uh, people that you love and even don't love. Call them and see how, and check up on them, see how they're doing. And this is a defining moment, I think, for all artists, but especially uh, here in Philly. Make music for the people. Swing, swing, swing and spread the love of music to as, as many people as possible, as far and as wide as you can. We have to stay strong. I know it's really hard to stay creative right now, apart, you know, and it's kind of, it's kind of points to the fact that uh, we operate the best when we're together. And yeah, just hang in there. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna pass. I would say, just keep in touch. Uh, what would you want to say right now to the Philly jazz community at large? We can do it. That's it. I look forward to seeing and playing with you all again very soon.